y'all welcome to wine down with chardonnay and today's video is to get ready with me for work this channel has definitely just turned into a bottle girl channel and i don't know but anyway so today's video i'm gonna be getting ready and then i'm gonna be giving some tips and tricks i don't i won't say tricks because i ain't been there long enough to get some good tricks but i'm gonna give y'all some tips on how to be a body girl because a couple people have been asking me on like TikTok and Instagram and stuff like that. So I was like, why not just make a video while I do my makeup, okay? So, so my first tip, well, I look like a glazed donut. My first tip is to follow all the casting call pages in your city. So if you live in Atlanta, Houston, Vegas, wherever they have all the service, try to see if they have a page that posts casting calls so me personally i'm gonna speak for houston because that's where i live it's the houston casting calls page i will insert it on the screen follow that page they literally post casting calls casting calls basically like every day almost but when you go to a casting call go in there confident like don't go in, go in there looking all scared or looking like you're in intimidated by all the people that's there because people could pick up on that like if they see you walking in there all scared they're gonna be like i don't know if i can should choose this girl because she can't even walk into a room full of other girls and like command attention so how is she gonna be able to get bottles and sell and book sections and stuff like that so when you go to these casting calls be confident in yourself and I had this girl message me and she was like, she never been a bottle girl before. Like, what should she do? When you go to this casting calls, I ain't telling you to lie. Okay? I'm not telling you to lie. But I'm not telling you to tell the truth either. Okay? Now, if you just starting out, if you just starting out, like this would be your first ever bottle girl job. Don't go in there talking about you being a bottle girl for five years. Because they're going to know you lying. Like, they're going to know you lying. Say, you, say you've been a bottle girl for like six months or eight months. Something like that. Or just say, oh, a little less than a year. You know? they People don't really want somebody who's completely new to the, the bottle girl world. Because like, they feel like they got to train you more than everybody because you never did this before. So you just got to go in there confident. And if you've never been a body girl before, it's so many videos on YouTube like saying what you should do and how to be one, tips and tricks. So I would binge watch all those videos and take some tips from them and fake it till you make it. That's the motto in this nightlife world. Fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it. Like, only person who know the truth is you and God. So, repent later and worry about that later. We just trying to get your foot in the door. Because once you like start working... And like build relationships with people, it'd be easy for you to go to like different clubs because there's so many promo groups, and you could like you know build a relationship with them, and then they might be like, oh, we're going to this club, so come work with us, you know. Fake it till you make it, and fake it with a smile. Now let's go on to the next one. I seriously can't talk and do my eyebrows at the same time. I don't know. This is kind of going with the casting call, but it could be either way. When you're going to these interviews, casting calls, going to talk to the club owner but if you're going to talk to these people right i'm going there looking like you just rolled out of bed because you're trying to show them that you look good enough not good enough but you're trying to show them that you cute and that you can bring people in to spend money all they care about is are you going to be able to bring people in the club to spend money simple as that so if you're going there looking like you just rolled out of bed and a raccoon ate your wig and now you got a big hole right here and then the wig all the way back here and um you live in the u.s your wig all the way in um south pole like don't don't go in there looking crazy nah get your hair done if you ain't gonna do nothing else get your hair done and wear lashes but i ain't say you gotta pay to get your makeup done and nothing like that but don't go in there cold turkey most clubs require you to wear makeup so don't go in there on your um alicia keys erica badu tip they don't care about that they want to see you done up and like a doll, basically. 
If you if you don't feel comfortable wearing makeup, it's not the job for you. Cause most clubs gonna require you to wear makeup. And if you if you try to go by and be like, oh, I just put on concealer, I don't want to hear that. Some will send you home. Like some will say, oh, you're not in uniform, so you can't work cause you don't got on no makeup. Also, going over the makeup, your nails. Have some type of nails. These right here is press on. They don't. They ain't the best, but it look like I got my nails done. Press on. $8, $6 at old Walmart if you can't afford it. I ain't telling you to steal, but five finger discount. Do something, cause you gonna need some nails. They do not want to see you with no nubs. I'm sorry. You cannot walk in there with your nails like that. Most people, most clubs, they will put on a flyer like dress to impress, hair done, nails done, makeup done. They put it on the flyer. Some clubs don't, but it's implied that you're coming with all those things done. Again, it sounds bad, but this industry, this little body girl industry is all about looks. Like, I don't really care nothing about nothing else besides money. You gotta have your looks together. Like I was saying, they care about looks above all else. If you're the cutest girl, I mean, everybody think they own, oh, they cute to themselves. But I'm saying like, if you're a conventional cute girl, you basically will get any job you want to. They don't care if you never worked in your life, especially in Houston. But Houston, Houston has a big like colorism problem. So if you light skinned, you would live in Houston, they'll pretty much give you the job. But us other girls, I ain't trying to claim I'm dark skinned. Not that I would have a problem with that, but I said that to say, if you're my color and darker, it's a little bit harder at the American clubs because they want light skins. That's that's just how it is. They want light skins or foreign. It is what it is. It's real bad in Houston. I wish it wasn't like that, but I don't own a club, so I can't change it. But please be mindful of that because I don't want you going to a casting call and then like you feeling defeated because you didn't know about the colorism here. Like they'll have one, they'll have one dark skin, brown skin girl, and that'll be it. But everybody else would be like just light skin and all women are beautiful but some of them be funny looking so I just be like okay I mean I'm funny looking to somebody so I can't really call other people funny looking but you know we all ugly to somebody that's all I'm saying anyway <laughs> moving on just keep in mind like before you go to a club like look at their social media and see if you will be a good fit for them like, when I go look for a club and a casting call or whatever I go to their Instagram and if I see they all, they got like all Hispanic bottle girls or I don't see no brown skinned girls, no dark skinned girls on their Instagram. Um, I might not go to that one because I that'll be a waste of time for me, especially if I see like every single girl is um Hispanic and they don't got no type of black girls, like not even a light skinned one. And I should know like, they only hire his Hispanic girls. So that just helps you not to waste your time. Like it may be discouraging, but trust me, it's a place for you. Like it's so many um clubs and girls always leaving and stuff. So girls always getting fired. So trust me, just keep looking and it'll be a club out there for you. This goes along with the hair and the makeup and stuff, but it's kind of its own thing. What you were wearing. My boss was just talking to us and she was talking about how at a casting call she had, this girl came in with one of those like mesh cover up things, you know. Anyway, she was wearing a little sheer see through thing with basically a bra and thong on to the casting call. Now, they do tell you to wear a club attire, right? They do. But you don't want to be out here looking like you about to go sell it on the corner, if you know what I mean. Like, they don't want, they don't want prostitutes, basically. Like, I know we wear the skimpy outfits and like everybody be like, oh, y'all might as well be strippers or whatever. But I wear it to the casting call. Like wear some cute. Usually clubs want you to wear it like all black. You know, I'm cute. Nothing too crazy. You just don't go there looking like you about to um you about to sell it on the corner. Like don't do that. Don't do that. Oh my eyebrows is not the same. I know it may be tempting to wear that kind of stuff because you like okay it's cute. And you showing off the assets and stuff, but you don't want to show off too much. Leave some, leave some for the imagination, you know. Wear something form fitting. You ain't got to be naked. Wear something form fitting, showing off the. If you got big boobs, wear a V neck and have them things sitting up to your neck. If you got a big butt, wear like a bodycon dress and um, you know, showing that thing sitting right, or wear like a two piece set. 
showing that thing poking or something like that. But I will say, when I was on my, when I went to this casting call for the club I work at, I was dressed up. The other girl, she wasn't. So it's different for every club, but I feel like make a good first impression. Like, let them know that you, um, that you could give body, like, you look good in their uniform and they ain't gonna have no choice but to hire you. Cause they gonna be like, dang, this girl, she came, she was looking right, she was fine. Like, I, I ain't gonna lie, y'all, y'all call it what you want. But if I see a girl with a big butt, I'd be like, dang, she got a big old butt. Like, sorry. So I know other people be thinking that too. Another thing, working for a club and working for a promo group is two different things. So, when you work for a promo group, you basically go from club to club. So whatever club they're hosting at that night, that's what club you go to. Me personally, I don't I wouldn't want to work for a promo team because a lot of them have favorites and some of the girls favors for the promoter just to be on the schedule. Like, you know what I mean by favors? Yeah. They be doing favors just to get on the schedule. So you gotta be mindful of that. Do not do not get with these promoters that you work with. Like do not get with nobody you work with because that just end up being messy. Trust me. He gonna tell somebody you might keep it a secret and you might think oh it's on the low nobody don't know. But dudes, dudes run their mouth more than girls. You might think he ain't telling nobody, but he didn't tell his homeboy. And then his homeboy didn't tell another one of the bottle girls. And then she didn't tell her friend. And next thing you know, everybody know that you're only on the schedule because you getting with the promoter. Like, that's not a good look. You don't even wanna, you don't even wanna make that type of name for yourself. Cause once you have a name for yourself, it don't matter how big you think the city is, dudes talk to each other. So you have to be very careful. But that goes for the DJ, the photographer, anybody who work on that promo team, just keep it strictly business. Like you could be friendly, but don't cross the line. Don't cross the line. Another thing, when working with a promo team, most of them gonna require you to book sections and only in order to work. They're going to want you to post flyers. Like, I heard this one promoter group, they had to post three times a day at, like, specific times. And even if you book your section, you ain't going to work it. Like, you got to make sure you know the rules of the promo group before you, like, go agree to do it. Because they'll have you booking all these sections just for the other body girls to work them. And you'll be like, well, I'm the one who booked the section. They want to sit with me. And they not going to care because they're just going to give it to the girls who've been there longer or who they got a relationship with and all that. So, like, get cool with the promoters, but don't, don't get in the bed with them, okay? They friend, not they bed mate. Now, I'm going to go to working in the club. Working in the club is a little different because you just work at the club. Like, you don't go from place to place. And some clubs will still uh, require you to like, you know, book sections or whatever. I would say that's a question to ask at the interview. Like, ask them, do they require you to book sections? Most don't say yes. But it's some clubs where like, they want you to book sections, but they'll still let you, let you work even if you didn't book a section. You just gotta find out and see, like ask the manager or whoever is in charge of you and see what they say. Another thing they do at the casting calls, they check your social media. So um, some clubs wanna see like how many followers you got on Instagram. And basically they think the more followers you have, the more people you can get to come to the club. That's basically their thought process on that. Me, personally, I don't have a lot of followers on, like, Instagram. So, people look at my Instagram and they be like, girl. And I still post with my club at work. I work at now, but all my followers on Instagram is from Florida. So, they not coming to Houston tomorrow to come book with me. So, I post with them. It don't make me a difference. But, they are going to want you to post because they want you to bring people in. Simple as that. I would say going up being yourself like if you're not a tripper person or happy don't go in there faking it because when you get a job they're gonna be like what happened to her personality like it was all hyper and excited now she in here all monotone and she looked uninterested but also don't go in there with an attitude like nobody wants to work with somebody who got an attitude it's just aggravating and it makes the night go horrible because everybody walking on eggshells because you got an attitude like no nobody don't want to deal with it you be yourself but also be like a little peppy like don't be end up being crabby and being rude acting like somebody just slapped you in the face or called your mama a hoe or something like don't do that just be cool the main thing you gotta do is be a likable person. Like, I'm, everybody personality different, but you can still be a likable person no matter what personality you have. 
Like, I feel like I'm, I'm, like, chippy and happy all the time. When I'm at work, I'm always smiling. Like, my customer service is great. I might not be the best bottle girl, but my customer service is good. Be happy. Be chipper. Don't be rude. Don't be mean. Like, don't be in a mean mug and looking like you about to fight somebody. Because everybody going to be looking at you like, what's the problem? You know? This this next piece of advice is like if you're not going to a casting call, just going into the club and you know applying in person. It's the same rules apply. Don't go on a busy day. Do not go on a busy day. Like if you're trying to go to a club to talk to the manager, do not go in there on a Friday or Saturday or Sunday. You like Houston days. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday usually when the clubs are the most packed because it's the weekend. You know, managers have a lot to do. They're not trying to sit here and interview nobody for a job when somebody didn't drop the bottle, somebody didn't get a bottle, you know. So go on like a weekday when it's super slow and nobody in there so you can actually talk to the manager. Sometimes the manager might not be there during the week, but at least you can talk to the people who work there and then... They can put in a good word. Okay, so yeah, if you're going there during the week, be mindful and then just go in there cute. Like I said, hair done, nails done, everything did. Okay, hair done, nails done, everything did. That should be your theme song when you in the bottle girl world, going to interviews, casting calls, you go to work, all that. Hair done, nails done, done, everything did. Make sure everything is done. And to add to this, now some of these. People, when you go to these casting calls and they're telling you how much they, the girls make and stuff, some of them will lie to you and say the girls make a whole bunch just to get you to come onto the team. And they might not be making that much. But I will say how much you make, it's 50-50. How much you make depends on the section you get and the service you present. Like, you could be the best service, but if you get put in the crappy sections, you barely going to make money. Like, and that's just the honest truth because I always get with these Promoters, y'all, if y'all seen my other videos, y'all know how much I don't like promoters. Like, I don't like them. They nice. They nice, but they ain't trying to spend no money because they, anyway, we ain't going to get on that topic in this video. Keep an open mind. Now, if you go into the interview and they say they only make 100 or $200 a night, they probably make it only like $80. That's the truth. If they say in the max they making is 100 200 them girls probably making eighty dollars a night because our club said they was making four hundred, five hundred. I made over five hundred one night. It's possible. At my club it is possible. But it's not gonna happen like that every night. Like some nights gonna be better with others. And that's another thing. When you're working in this type of field, some days it's gonna be better than others. Like it's some days you're gonna go in and you're gonna make bank. And then in some days you're gonna be making a hundred dollars. It's nothing wrong with that. Like a hundred better than nothing for a few hours of work. But don't go into it thinking you're going to be making a thousand dollars. I know y'all see the TikToks and they be like money count with me. And they done made about three thousand in one night. They lying to y'all. They really lying to y'all. Like I'm, I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to keep it a stack. They ain't making that. Now, I don't know how it is with Vegas. I can't speak on other cities, but in Houston, I would say it depends on where you work. But most clubs, like if you work at camp or something, you in Houston, you work at camp. Yeah, if you work at camp or something like that, then yeah, maybe you can make 3000 because they have a lot of celebrities who come there and then they have like, they bottle prices is very expensive. You might can make that, but most of the other clubs, you're not making no 3000 in one night. It's, it's not gonna happen every night. It might be one night, somebody balling out, they come to your club, you make that. Cool. But that, every night it's not happening. And that's just me being straight up and honest. So by the service, you are working with a lot of girls. Don't don't be in there like starting drama or in the middle of drama. Go there, make your money, and go home. These people, they might be nice or whatever, but be friends at a distance. Be friends at a distance. Like y'all y'all cool, y'all go out, y'all work together, whatever. But don't think y'all BFFs because that can flip in a matter of seconds, okay? Don't be like thinking y'all BFFs and stuff and then be surprised when something happens. Like, just love everybody from a distance, okay? I'm going to tell you this. When you go to this interview or whatever, ask them how much the uniforms usually cost. Because, for instance, you could be working a night, you barely made any money. Say you made like... $200, right? You made $200, so you think, oh, I'm going home with $200. No. These uniforms, 
be pricey like i seen one video this girl was like her uniform was a hundred dollars so imagine you go to work you only made two hundred dollars and your uniform a hundred that's not including tip out to the hookah man the club whatever tip out they have so you got to be mindful of that like ask them uniform prices Ask them where they get their uniforms from. This might be a question for when you actually get hired, cause if you're not going to even work, if you're not going to be working there, they ain't gonna be like, oh yeah, we get our uniforms in here, cause they like, why do you know where you, we get our uniforms from? You don't even work here, you know. But this is a question for when you get hired, like ask them how much the uniforms. Ask them how often y'all gotta buy uniforms. Some people be like, oh, we only buy them for like. You know, holidays, stuff like that. You might only buy them for, ho for holidays. You ain't got to worry about um, spending all your money you just made on the uniform, you know. But some clubs, they want a new uniform every day. So, like, you got to buy a new uniform every time you work. It just all depends. So, make sure you're aware of that. To add on to that, make sure you're aware of how much tip out is going to be. You work somewhere, right? Then they say at the end of the night, you got to pay the hookah man $50. And you looking like... Why I gotta pay the hookah man $50? What he did that was so great that he deserved $50 of my money. Nothing. And you're looking crazy because you made $100 tonight and you gotta get the hookah man $50. You gotta pay for the uniform and all this. So now you coming out in the negative because you had to pay everybody your money. That don't make no type of sense. I gotta give you all my money. So this, this segment is kind of like once you had a job, how... How it should be or what you should know make sure you know the tip out just go in do your job leave it's okay to get these customers these customers they gonna ask for your number and stuff they are because you know men thirsty they always gonna be thirsty and they just especially in the club you got on a cute little outfit you might be looking a little thick that day you know you know, it's poking a little bit extra today. So the dudes, and then you got your hair laid, your nails done, makeup done. You looking like a whole snack, you know. Dudes going to try you. So be mindful of that. Don't go start no relationship. What Miami said, never, ever, ever fall in love that with a dude that you met up in the club. Okay? That's rule number one. Don't do that. Get a number so they can book with you. Look, leave it at that. They ask you to go out on dates. Say, oh, you can see me at work. <laughs> It be funny because I be seeing posts like dudes be so mad when by the girls say that they be like, oh, you want to see me? Come see me at work. Dudes don't be liking that. But who cares? It's the truth. Like, you want to spend on me? Come spend at work. Simple as that. Like, nah, don't miss out on your husband or nothing. Because who knows? He might be in the club, but I don't want my husband to be in the club. But I'm in the club, so I can't really say nothing. Don't begin with all the customers because, again, dudes talk. And they'll have all your business in the street. So the whole club gonna know that you over there, you done went to Mr. Larry's house and he paid you $500 for the night. And now everybody looking at you like, dang girl, all you cost is $500. That's all you had to do. He gave you $500 and you was down with that. And I, I done heard some stories that that's what these girls be doing. And they be doing five homies for that price. Me personally, I don't know nothing about that. I'm just saying what I heard. What I heard in the streets was people be doing that. That's their business. I ain't here to judge. I ain't here to judge. But don't do that. Leave Mr. Larry alone. Let him just come in there and spend money on you. Don't go home with him. Let Mr. Larry come in there and buy a few bottles. Tip you good. Make him think you're doing it now. Make him think. Make him think he got a chance. Because when they think they got a chance... They're going to keep showing up because they be like, okay, she might not be with it today, but one day she go, you know, she going to do it. You can have that go on, going for about a year. It's a whole year later. You don't even know what Mr. Larry call it like, but you know that he do come to your club every weekend and tip you. Simple. Just don't go home with him for real. That's all I got to say. This is what I've seen in a lot of videos and it's very true. Do not forget to ask for your tip, okay? With that being said, don't think, oh, they don't want to tip me. They just bought a bottle or whatever. People will tip you, but you're dealing with somebody who is under the influence. They already spending money. They not going to think, oh, well, let me spend some additional money and send her a tip. Some people do. Some people do think about it always, but some people don't. So just be like, hey, if I'm doing a good job, like, you know, you want to tip me? 
blah 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 it's no pressure but i would greatly appreciate it because this is how i make my money and leave it at that all they can say is a yes or a no if they say yes great if they say no i ain't telling you what to do but they gonna start seeing you less and less because i ain't gonna break my back and you ain't give me nothing i'm saying that's just me personally that's me personally don't listen to my advice because <laughs> I ain't trying to get nobody fired now. Yeah, don't be afraid to ask for your tip. Like, first thing it says no. If they don't got no money, they'll try to give you like five dollars something. Five dollars add up. That could be the uh the money that could go to the hookah man and you don't have to go in your stash. Or oh, that's five dollars towards the uniform, you know? Every dollar do count. Make sure you know the tip out procedures, like is your is your club paying you for each bottle you sell? Or is it a flat rate? Or are you getting paid hourly? Is it tip only? Like, make sure you know all this stuff. So my club is tips only. And all the hookah tips go to the club. I just found that out, but make sure you read the rules. Cause she said it was in the rules. I read them, but I ain't seen them. But make sure you read the rules. Know the people who work there. Cause you have some people be like, oh, I know the owner trying to go to the back and they don't know the owner. And the owner looking at you like, why you let these people come back here? And you like, they told me they knew you. That's the owner told you before. Don't let people go to the big. That's a given. Security should handle that. But some clubs, aka the one I work at, the security, they just, I don't know what they do for. They for decoration. Because they don't, they don't do nothing. We ain't going to get into that on this video either. Because, Lord. Also, this is a kind of... A hygiene one. Usually, usually girls are good about it, but you don't want nobody to be talking about you. So, make sure you always got like some spray and stuff like that. My next video is gonna be a what's in my bottle girl bag. So I'm gonna show y'all everything I bring to work. Just have some spray, you know, a few times. Nothing too crazy. You don't gotta go get like Gucci and all that. Just get you a little smell good, and you'll be fine. Yeah, so get some smell good. Make sure you put on deodorant. Please take a shower. I should have to say this, but you never know. You never know. Um, it's bottle girl and it's a vain world. It's all about looks and appearances. Like, if you scared to be judged on how you look, it's not the job for you. Like, I really used to be a person who did not want people to judge me based on how I look. That was the main reason I wasn't a bottle girl for like for a long time. If y'all watching this, I've been bottle girl for like a year. A year. But the main thing for me was I didn't want to be judged on how I look. And that's the whole industry. Like they gonna judge you for how you look. Good, bad. They gonna judge you for how you look. It is what it is. Once you come to terms with that, you'll be Gucci because you can't change it. Just embrace it. And be the baddest be in the city, period. Like, no if ends and buts about it. You can't tell me I'm not Beyonce. Like, you cannot tell me that. And that's how you should be. Like, you don't let nobody tell you or make you feel less than. You just not a cup of tea. If they think you ugly, you that's not the club for you. Because you're going to find a club that's going to thank you. Again, Beyonce, Rihanna, whoever you think is cute. Like, it really don't matter. Every club ain't gonna be the club you want to work at anyway. Like, if this something you want to do, don't get discouraged if you get one no. Some people you can find a club you want to work at the first time. Some people it take a few, take a few clubs. Like, if if it's something you really want to do, don't give up after the first no. Like, just keep going. You'll find a club that you like. But just like research and see if you want to work for a promo team or if you want to work for a club. If you want to be at a different place every night. Then I would say work at a promo group. You'll probably meet more people and see more new faces. If you like seeing the same people all the time, work at a club. Usually clubs, it's the same people every single weekend. Like, literally. Where I work at, the same people every weekend. It might be a couple of new faces, but it's usually the same people. And I'm going to speak for Houston. Houston has... It seemed like they got bottle service at every establishment. Every establishment got bottle service. But you got to be careful. Some clubs, when they say you're a waitress, you actually going to be bringing people food and stuff like that. Like 
some clubs they do serve food and you have to bring it out to the people. So if you don't wanna um if you don't wanna be handling food and stuff, you need to ask them like do y'all do y'all serve food? Like do I have to bring it out? Yada yada yada. The club I work at, they have food outside, they can eat it inside, but we do not touch the food. That's them. If they wanna get food, they go outside and they get the food. So be mindful of that. Like ask them. Y'all serve food? If so, do I have to take it to them? Do y'all have somebody in the back who takes it to them? Like, who's in charge of the food? Make sure you know, because you don't want to go in there and they be like, let me get a 10-piece, all flats, blah, blah, blah. And you looking like, why are you asking me about wings? I ain't getting no food. And they like, yeah, you got to go get my food. And now everybody in confusion, because you like, Y'all never told me y'all serve food and I had to get it for people. And they're like, oh yeah, you do got to serve food. Like we serve food here. Like know the place you're going to be working at. Know if they serve food. Know if you got to bring the food. Know what bottles they carry. Like this is going back to bottle service. Know the bottles y'all carry. Don't say y'all have vodka or whatever. Like yeah, we have all every vodka. You can get whichever one. And then somebody coming in ordering some Seagram's. And you like Seagram's. I ain't never heard of Seagram's before and they like, what you mean? You said y'all got every type of bottle and then now y'all going back and forth because you don't know what type of bottles y'all got and they over here ordering Seagram's which should be a crime in the first place because know what bottles y'all um, sell. When people ask you, you'll know what to give them. Also, no like champagnes and stuff. When you have champagnes, um... Cause some people like the sweet kind, some people don't like, you never know. So when somebody come in, they want something light, they don't want that too heavy. Don't offer them no Hennessy cause y'all know Hennessy is not light. Like Hennessy is not light. We know Hennessy have you on your neck the next day. Everybody looking crazy like what happened last night? And all you gotta say is Henny and everybody like, oh, that's what happened. Like, you know? Just be a, I ain't saying you gotta be an alcohol expert. That's not what I'm saying. But just be, be mindful of the alcohol y'all sell. Hold on. Like I was saying, know the look liquors. That's a question they already said. That's a question they may ask y'all at the casting call. But just know your liquors. You don't gotta know them all, but know the main ones people order in the club. Like, if you ever go to a club, look and see what people usually get. Like, you will see Hennessy, Casamigos, Don Julio, cheap people, they get crowned. <laughs> Sorry. Cheap people get crowned, then they got the expensive bottles like 1942, Azul, um, Ace of Spades, and stuff like that. So, know what y'all serve so you can offer stuff. And know how to upsell. If somebody say, oh, I want Hennessy, be like, well, we have... VSOP, you got XO, like, would you want one of those? I mean, all they can say is yes or no. If they say no, then keep it moving. But then if they say yeah, you just made a, a bigger sale because VSOP and XO is more expensive than regular Hennessy, you know? So it don't work to try. Don't be scared to ask. The worst they can say is no. Some people might say no rudely, but just brush it off. Don't internalize any other feelings. Somebody coming there with attitude, it don't got nothing to do with you. Don't get mad, don't start cussing them out. Like, again, customer service is the number one thing. I hate what people say, but customer is always right for the most part. Even though they be drunk, they be aggravating. During the time the club open, it's about the customer. Now, when they leave, when they leave, you can talk about them with your friends, the manager, all of that. But why they there, the club is trying to make money. Simple as that. They trying to make money. So when they trying to make money and they got a customer complaining, they gonna go with the customer because that's the one who paying. They gotta pay you. The customer is paying the club. So they not gonna be sitting here unless it's like something that's really crazy, you know. Unless it's something really crazy, then yeah, the club will have your back. But for the most part, they want that they want that customer money. So they gonna be listening to what the customer say because again, the customer is the one who paying. So they gonna be like, oh man. Did she mess up like that? Like, was that how it truly was? You know, they don't believe looking at you crazy because this customer saying all this type of stuff and you saying that ain't happened, but somebody got to be lying. They ain't gonna call the customer lying because the customer the one who paying them. So they gonna be looking at you like, oh, you lying, you know? 
So just just take that into consideration. Check on your customers, give them a smile. Like a smile goes a long way. Don't be in that mean buggy and them looking like you wanna fight them and stuff like that. People go into the club to have fun, okay? So you wanna have fun with them. Main thing is y'all when y'all go into these places, please be safe, like be aware of your surroundings. Y'all leaving in the middle of the night with like these little outfits on and stuff. Please be careful, like if you leaving, let somebody know or wait till somebody else leaving so y'all can go out together. Don't be misindependent and leave by yourself and then next thing you know, we um we turn on the news and they talking about this girl been snatched up outside the club and we looking crazy like how that happened. So everybody looking like how she got snatched outside the club and we was all here like she should have waited for somebody to go out with her. Yada yada yada. Don't don't get hurt. Don't get hurt trying to be superwoman. Okay? And these dudes be weird. Like some of these dudes they'll be waiting for you to come out, out of work just to do they shot or whatever, not knowing they looking like a whole creep. Cause who wait somebody to come out of work to talk to them? Like we women, we gotta be careful out here. I would say have some mace, but most clubs don't let you have mace in them. Cause if you spray somebody, we all going down. And make sure your phone charged. Like don't go to work with a dead phone. You you might not even be able to get on your phone, but don't have a dead phone going to work. Cause you never know what can happen. You don't want to be the one with a the phone dead and you looking crazy cause something happened and you ain't got no phone like no okay to close out I would say if this is something you want to do like let's do it um again the worst they can say is no if they say no then that's not the club for you like this keep trying and if you feel like Okay, I didn't try and then nobody hired me. Make up something. That's all I can tell you. Like, come up with something. Because um, obviously you're going wrong in the interview phase. If nobody, if you went to a million clubs and nobody hired you, you like in the interview phase. Um, but like I was saying, if it's something you want, just keep trying. Like, don't give up after the first no. You'll find a club for you and go out there, do your best and make your money. The worst they can say is no. And that's about it. I would show y'all what uniform we wearing, but we are supposed to be getting new uniforms today. So I don't know what we wear. This is the final makeup look. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Ooh, I didn't have one ring on this whole time. Y'all ain't even tell me. Anyway, thank y'all for watching this video. I hope these tips help. I know it was a little all over the place, but that's just how I think. So either get with it or get lost. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just playing. But um, that's all I have for you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and give me a thumbs up if you find these tips helpful. And let me know how it goes in a job search. So if I ever go to another casting call, I'm going to use my own advice. But, you know, hopefully this job works for the time being because I don't want to keep going from club to club. Anyway. If you haven't already, go watch my other Bottle Girl story time videos. I give y'all the tea on what happens in the day-to-day -day process because it's all fun and roses on TikTok. But I tell y'all the real truth of working at the club, okay? Thank you. Thank you again for watching this video and peace.